Hi, welcome to the Holy Land and the site of Mount Arbel. Today we're standing on Mount Arbel, which is the believed place where the Great Commission took place. We're going to be looking at some other fascinating things as well that took place in Scripture from here on Mount Arbel. So, some pronounce it Mount Arbel, others Mount Arbel. We're just going to say Mount Arbel, that's our preferred uh, pronunciation. You'll be able to see in the background a beautiful view of the Sea of Galilee. So, anyway, let's look at some fascinating things from the Scriptures that took place at this biblical site of Mount Arbel. We're filming this video from Mount Arbel, which has a spectacular view of the Sea of Galilee. It's located on the west side of the Sea of Galilee and is the tallest mountain around in the area right next to the Sea of Galilee. This is the traditional site where it is believed Christ gave the Great Commission found in Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Many theologians believe this is the place because it, because it is the tallest mountain in the area and provides a perfect view of the Sea of Galilee. With this beautiful view of the Sea of Galilee, we'll show you a few outstanding sights. We should mention first of all that around the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee, according to the Gospels, Christ spent 70% of his ministry time. We can see uh, Magdala. This is the small town where Mary Magdalene was from. She was the person from whom Christ cast out seven demons. She was a passionate follower of Christ. She was one of the first ones at the tomb uh, upon his resurrection. We have the place where Peter was restored uh, to Christ after his denial of Christ. We have the place where Christ called uh, at least four of his disciples. We have Capernaum, where Jesus set up his home ministry base. We can see up from that. We can see uh, Chorazin, one of the three towns that Christ cursed. We can see Bethsaida, where uh, some of the disciples were from. We have the Sermon on the Mount, from where Christ preached his longest and most famous sermon. We can see where Christ fed the 5,000, and then on another occasion where he fed 4,000. We can see a place called Kersey, where Christ cast out many demons from a demon-possessed man, and the demons entered into a herd of pigs and ran down the hillside into the sea. We can see where Christ walked on the water. We can see where he calmed the sea numerous times. So many fascinating things happened right around this northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. Now we're going to look with a little more detail into the calling and the giving of the Great Commission. It says in Matthew 28, 16, it says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. Because Christ spent around 70% of his ministry time around the Sea of Galilee, Mount Arbel would have provided a wonderful reflective view to have as the backdrop as Christ gave this powerful charge to his disciples. The Great Commission was one of the last contact Christ had with his disciples, which shows the importance of this commandment. Now, let's look at the giving of the Great Commission and see some fascinating aspects about it. Matthew 28, 16 says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Man, I just sends uh, goosebumps up and down my uh, spine as I read that. Uh, what does the phrase, all authority in heaven and on earth been given to me mean? Well, there are seven, several angles from which we could consider this powerful statement. Speaking of Christ in Colossians 1, 16 through 18, it says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things and in Him all things hold together. Now what do we see here? We see that Christ is the image of
image of the invisible God. He is God made manifest so we can see and understand Him better. All, th all things were created by Christ in heaven and on earth. All thrones, dominions, rules, rulers, and authorities were created by Him, and He rules over them. He is the head of all things, and all of creation is held together and sustained by His power. So when Christ said, all authority is given to me, He was talking about everything as being the creator of the universe. All authority resides, re resides in Him. Now another angle of looking at all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me is found in the miracles that Christ did around the Sea of Galilee. Um, he did uh, all kinds of miracles here to show that He was the Lord over everything and He had supremacy and authority over everything. He showed authority in the miracles as He had power over sickness. He healed every kind of, every kind of sicknesses. He had authority over the demons and the demonic world. He cast out demons. The demons submitted to Him. They cried out to Him. He had authority over them. He had authority over the weather, the climate. He calmed the sea here several times. He had authority over nature. He cursed a fig tree and it died. He had authority over animals on the other side of the Sea of Galilee here. He sent uh, from a demon-possessed man a legion of demons that went into 2,000 pigs and the whole herd ran down the hillside into the Sea of Galilee. He had authority over, once again, the demonic world and authority over animals. He had authority over death. Uh, he raised a number of people from the dead. He had authority over the natural resources, food. He fed the 5,000 on one occasion. He found, fed 4,000 on another occasion. And he also showed authority in being able to have the power to forgive sins. Isn't that amazing that Christ showed his authority over everything? So when he said, Every, all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth, he was speaking of maximum authority. So another uh, uh, reality or fascinating truth we see in Scripture it also says in Philippians 2.9 that every knee in heaven and on earth will bow before the authority of Christ. Philippians 2 says, 2.9, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and, and under the earth, talking about the demonic world, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Absolutely amazing. So, based upon the authority that Christ possesses, He commands us to go and make disciples. So He says in Matthew 28, 19, He says, Go therefore, because all authority has been given to me on heaven and on earth, go therefore and make disciples of all nations or people groups, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. So it's our responsibility to go and it's God's responsibility and promise to be with us and help us. So thank you for watching this video. God bless you and hopefully this is a challenging video for you. God bless.